Hey folks, Machine Repeat here. Looking at a picture from last week. I was down in Hiawatha, Kansas for a winter crop meeting and got to meet my old friend James Gall. And James turns 88 years old today, November 24th, 2014. And a number of years ago, I stopped in to pay a visit to James at his farm in Reserve, Kansas. And folks, James Gall has, I think, the world's most amazing collection of international harvester plows. And I've never uh, showed this video before, but here is the, the day I spent with James and his son Jim. And an amazing look at quite a collection of international harvester plows. Hey, Machine Repeat here, and I am down in Reserve, Kansas with James Gall. James, thanks for inviting me down. Glad to, to have you. To look at your uh, very unique collection of international plows, is that correct? Yes, I have the things. Okay, and James, we have your son Jim Gall here. Good morning. And Jim, you are from? Pierce City, Missouri. Pierce City, Missouri, okay. And you've helped, helped Dad here with the collection over the years? And... Just enjoyed helping and find and restore. Okay. And show. And show. Okay. And you, uh, James, you do take your tractors and your plows to uh, international harvester shows all over yes, the country? Yes, and, and some of the local shows. Okay. And Jim, we have your, uh, or James, we have your daughter Betty with us here. Betty, you're from, is it Perry, Oklahoma? Perry, Oklahoma. Okay. And uh, you also... I, I help him with the research and getting the okay. stuff. So you've got international harvester uh, running through your blood too? Yes. Uh, okay. Well, folks, this is one interesting and unique collection of international plows here that James has accumulated. And James, can you tell us, and Jim, can you tell us about the plows? Well, this, this first plow here is a Canadian plow. It is, it is also a number eight little genius, only it's eight C. C stands for Canada. It was manufactured in Hamilton, Ontario. Uh, a lot of things are very different on it. Well, there's, there is some parts that are still carrying the same parts number and things as the American-made plows. The plow is very unusual in the fact that it is adjustable in width of the amount of cut that it makes. It has very unusual mold boards and lays. And where did you, uh, you've had this plow for a while now, James? Oh, I, probably about five years. Okay. Ten, uh, and Jim, you were telling me it's adjustable. Can you can you show us what? Uh... It's adjustable in the width. Whereas an American plow, you'd buy 12 inch. You had a 12 inch. You could bring this one in with the adjustment bolts. Okay. The levers are a half notch, where the American plow was a full notch because you have a roller. If you had a Wheatland tractor or a tricycle tractor, you could adjust the height of your levers. For the tractor height. Okay, good stuff. Now, plow number two, what do we got going, James? That is the very first, that's the very first plow that International put on rubber tires themselves. Okay. In the past, they always thought you had to have a larger wheel on the landslide. So, in order to get the larger wheel in rubber, they put on a 21 inch tire. Of course, at that time, that was a fairly common tire on some of the older cars. Right. Uh, it, uh, they're kind of scarce, at least they seem to be that way. I, okay. I was actually four years getting that one located and did. It took you four years to buy it. You're a patient man, James. Well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but nevertheless, it, uh, it, it's unique. It's different. All right. Now, I understand we have Mutt and Jeff coming up here. Yes. Now, tell us these, about uh, these two. This, this next plow here. It's, it's a number eight, a little G, just like those around here, but it is two bottom, 10 inch plow. 10 inch? I, the fact is, I've been to many shows and things, and I've never seen another 10 inch. Wow. Uh, they, they made them, they even made a three and a four bottom version of them. Of course, I never expect to see one. Okay. But at, because I don't know how practical they would be because they couldn't blow trash. Mm hmm. So. But it's for small tractor. I, I I don't know. Okay, ten inch, and then right next to it. Oh. Right next, your ten inches is your spacing here. Right. For those that might not. Know. Okay. Yeah, they, they cut ten inches. Okay. Well, the next one here, which I call it Mutton Jeff, is the eighteen inch. That is the widest cut plow that 
they made the little geniuses. Okay. But it's uh, uh they only made the 18 inches in uh, one and two bottom plows. Okay. Now, how old do you suppose these plows are, James? Well, uh, this one is prior to uh, 39. Okay. Oh, uh, pardon me. I, I I missed back there on that first rubber tired one. They used a 21 inch tire only in 39 and 40. Really. So you've done a little research on these international oh, plows. Oh, yes. Sometimes I can't remember what I've researched. <laughs> now, this next plow, international themselves, called the brush breaking plow. It is designed... A brush what? Brush breaking. Brush breaking plow. It is designed to plow at least 12 inches deep. It wow. can be used to reclaim flooded land and such as that as grew up with small trees and things. Okay. Uh, now, Jim, you were saying, what were you showing me before? It has a... There's a cutter on the back side of your land side to cut, undercut the tree roots for the next pass so that the trees will totally turn over and not stand back up. And that's if there well, was flooded ground and it had been a couple... flooded ground. Okay. And that 33-inch this... rolling cutter has got a high roller bearing in it. Turns very free. A Hyatt roller bearing. Now tell me about those, James. Well, Hyatt bearings, I don't know whether they even make them anymore or not, but they were real common in, in older cars okay. and things. They was, uh, they was a real fine, they are long roller bearings, what they are. They've got a spiral uh, groove cut in them and holes for lubrication. Very, very, very good bearing. Okay. And But that, that roller cutter is actually an option. Hmm. Standard was a knife. It depended on what you, what you was plowing and things. Now, where did you buy this plow, James? Was it local? No, sir. Nashville, Missouri. Okay. And that was that was a six-year project. Get that? Plow. Oh man. The the gentleman took sick. And his mind went bad, and uh, I'd left a card down there. And finally, one day his widow called, and one of us still interested. Okay. And. Uh, now, James, when you take these plows around to, to farm shows or to international, con, you know, collector conventions, what kind of response do you get from people? Uh, quite a bit on the uh, real unusual ones. Okay. And some people, they just ask questions you can't even hardly imagine. But right. I'm glad to see the people, and I do the best I can to to tell right. what I know well, about. You're a living history of international plows. This is terrific. Well, well, what else? What else we got down the line here now? Okay, we're into. The oldest two-way plow that I have. Oh. That this plow belongs to the boy. Go ahead. Okay. So this one. is your plow, Jim. It's a 37 number, pin, number 37 pin brake two-way plow. You have your right and your left mold boards. These were commonly used in irrigation land to keep your lands uh, level for flood irrigation. Okay. It's called a pin brake in that it does not have a string, spring a trip if you were to hit a rock or a root. This piece of wood, that's a piece of hedge, would shear, and this sleeve would go with the tractor. Back up, put it back together, and whittle out another pin. Wow. But as all these plows are, rope trip. We don't have any hydraulic lift plows here. Right. This one uses a rod instead of a rope. Okay. But in the little genius area, these are all, all rope trip. But it, this is a number 37. Okay. The next one is a number 38 two-way. It has no crank. I prefer it has no lever. You just cranks for leveling, depth, and everything. Okay. That plow really came out on steel. Hmm. And they cut the wheels down to put rubber on it. Okay. And, uh, and that's an International 38. Oh, yes. And I don't know whether I could even found it. found the wheels like to go on it, sure. so I just put tires back on it. Right. Wow. The next one here is a Number 39, two-way plow. It's a two-bottom. Okay. Uh, it, uh, now a lot of people think about rollovers. This are tumbles. Okay. When you lift it, the, the front of the plow goes down and comes around. And I've never used it. I have seen some pictures of, of okay. it being used. This angle iron here will go completely onto the track or the plow. This piece will come up 
and latch in here. And raise the plow in the frost. When that happens, these Weber ties will come off the ground approximately 12 inches. Wow. This is referred to as a tumble bug plow. Tumble bud? Tumble bug. Tumble bug plow. And where did you pick this one up, guys? Nate, Nate, Nashville, Missouri. Nashville, Missouri, okay. Wasn't it Nashville? I believe it was. Yeah. And how, when did you start collecting them, James? Was it, has it been a long time ago? Well, I I didn't get too serious to plows probably 10 years ago. Started looking for the unusual. Okay. Of course, you'll find a lot of unusual stuff well, around here. Well, you have found some terrific ones. Now, I see we have one more in the line here. What do we got, what do we got next, James? That's well, a number two sub-soiler. Okay. Number two subsoiler. You break up plow pan. Okay, now does this one come from Missouri also? Yes. <laughs> I All found right. this one down by Jamesport. Okay. And how long have you guys owned it? Well, I restored it probably eight years ago. What kind of condition was it in when you picked it up, Jim? Mainly just rust. Okay. I mean, when we restore we don't repaint so you got to take every bolt out and you got to heat them and work to get them All right got to be patient with them huh well it's beautiful beautiful condition now you did a great job we've got a disc plow over here okay i don't know how you pitch it going to be with a shade uh, it, it, he found it down in southern missouri okay and it's a steel wheeler. It does have a hydraulic lift on it. Uh, I brought it up here because I've got a mountain disc plow on a little cub, but it won't run. Okay, now it's James, I gotta ask you, what out of your collection here, what's your favorite of these plows? Do you have one or do you love them all the same? Oh, I don't think I've got a favorite for them. Just enjoy it. How about you, Jim? Do you, uh, well, they, partial they've, all, to... they've all got their special spot. I mean, it'd be hard to say which right. one's favorite. They're just, right. they're all different. It must be fun to find them. I mean, looking for the diamond in the rough, uh, I well, would imagine. Well, we enjoy it. Yeah. We're like, we're like a kid with a new toy every time we find a different one, I guess. Sure. We've got some more over here. Well, let's go back to the east side. That gets your light right. You ready? Okay, James, what do we what do we got next? Well, we have terracing plows here. There's two models of them. Terracing plows. International Harvester made the plow, and a service manufacturing company in Texas built all the terracing parts. Okay. And right closest to us here is the smaller, light, lighter weight one. These are basically on a little wonder frame, okay. which is slightly lighter. The, it has no gearbox on it. And uh, the only way you could control how far you threw the dirt was by the throttle. Okay. Which would certainly be inconvenient when you slowed up if you wouldn't have the power. Uh, yes. And the fact is that plow is quite hard to find. I, I've only seen, I think, one more of them. Really? And I had to go quite a little ways to get that one. And where did this one come from? A big pardon? Where did this one come from? I got it out to uh, Herkimeyer, Kansas. Herkimeyer, Kansas. Now, what part it, of the state is that? Well, it was, uh, it's, it's northwest of Marysville. Okay. Only time I've ever been there when I went out to plow. And you just happened to cross it, or did you? No, uh, uh, talked to another guy had an ad in the paper I wanted something or the other about terrace plows. I called and visited with him, and he said, yes, I, there's uh, one out there in Kansas. He said it's a uh, look too high price for me. I've already got one. Okay. So he furnished me the name and the uh, telephone number and things. So now, now, James, I won't ask you what you paid for. I'll just assume you got yourself a good buy, right? Well, I I didn't think it was a good buy when I bought it, but it turned out, it turned out it was. That's good. I know you're a sharp cookie. I, I know you do well on these deals. So Now, we have another uh, Okay, in the clock. back back there is the, it's a, I guess you'd say the better one. It's a number eight, 18, it's put on a number eight little genius 118 plow. Okay. And then, of course, service company built the transmission, the auger, and uh, the hitch. I think that's basically what they, what they, oh, oh yeah, they put on the, the, the bracket for the tailwheel. Okay. 
and uh, so would you say these terracing plows they're the most unusual rare plows that you have James well oh I don't know there there's quite a few of them transmission type in this part of the country okay so it's it's not probably not the rarest okay but you don't see very many of them fixed up or anything and all, and all Ter terracing plows were used prior to when track tractors did not have blades, they were not bulldozers. Okay. So there wasn't a bulldozer to build a terrace, and so these were used to conservation would lay your terrace out and you'd start plowing. Okay. And you, and the speed was important the further you got out from the top of your terrace to throw your dirt. And that's why the transmission is the most common plow. Okay. In other words, when you start building a terrace close, you start out with your transmission in low gear. And as you got farther out plowing, then you speeded your auger up to throw back to the center. Okay. And there's just miles and miles of terraces in this part of the country that was built with hills. Really? Uh, it's hooked to an H farm all which you wouldn't do very good in building terraces. They, uh, you need at least an M, and there was custom operators back in them days, and there was one, oh, northwest of here, they used a big old W9 to Pull it. There was one around here, a uh, couple of guys who custom making terraces. They had a, an industrial type of Minneapolis lean that pulled it. But they just made, built and built and built. The attachment that service put on is accompanied with a brass tag that says service right here on, okay. on the castings that service made. Okay. Which both these have it. The, uh, Oh, they're beautiful plows. I, I have not run across many in my travels, I'll say that. Well, they was disassembled and, like everything else, that blast and cleaned up. Just a little work to get them back to this condition, huh? Yes. <laughs> the, uh, well, I don't know what else I was going to say there. This blade on this tractor here was also made by the service company as a companion to the Terrison plows. Okay. Designed to fill in ditches and to build the ends of the terraces up that you couldn't do the plow. Okay. The, that blade will only fit an H or an M, and it raises and lowers with just a plain old ordinary cultivator seal. Really? Okay. They are, the blades are seem to be very scarce. I, uh -huh. I've i never seen another one. I've heard there was one here a year ago out here somewhere in western Kansas. You heard a rumor. There's, there might be one other one around, huh? Well, I'm sure there is. Okay. I'm That's sure there pretty is. pretty cool. Good stuff, And I looked James. for a long time before I found that one. Okay. All right, James, we have another row of plows here. What do we got? Well, this is a pretty poor example of plow. It's just what I've run across. It is a two-bottom little wonder plow. The story was, of course, it naturally was on steel wheels. The dealer would often give that plow to you if you bought a new regular farm oil. And uh, throw in the little wonder plow. Yes, huh? they was a little bit light built. Okay. Didn't stand up too good. And that's not the best example, but that's the best I have. Okay. What else we got going? The next here? one here is a newer type of a little wonder in a one bottom 16 inch. Okay. It's 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 a it's a plow. It's been used right before I bought it. Okay. Plow garden and things with. Yep. The next plow here is a little genius one bottom 18 inch okay this also is the same plow that they put the whirlwind terracing equipment on ah, interesting this next one here is just it's a two bottom little genius number eight okay fact is the a fact number is the eight. neighbor did some plowing with a couple years ago okay but it's, it's just the idea it's a two bottom okay this is a three bottom 12 inch plow which the uh, 12, uh, three bottom 12 inches is just reasonably scarce. Okay. And some should have been restored, but I haven't done it. Yep. The next one is a four bottom. Now we're, st we're still with the uh, little genius, number okay. eight. Okay. And uh, I've plowed with it. It's it's a not very nice plow. And these are all rope trip plows. Okay. This next one here is a five bottom, mm. number eight little genius. Very rare plow. A five bottom, number eight little genius. Yes. Okay. Of course, you know, if, if you notice, it's got a much heavier wheels and things on it. Yep. And, and, but it's still a little eight bottom. Pardon me. Five bottom little G. Okay. And was this, uh, you've had this one for quite a while, James? Uh, 
three or four years I bought them on a sale here. Have you seen many other five bottoms around? Or is this... well, not, not in a rope trip. Okay. Most, if you get into the newer ones, they're all hydraulic. Okay. Oh, man. Good stuff, James. Thanks for the, uh, the tour of your plows. That is a fantastic collection. You, uh, you, you've done a lot of great work with plows. You're, you're, uh, oh, yeah, I, you're living history on these things. This is awesome. Well, I, you've got to check in some things out. Well, you must love them, and it's, uh, oh, yes. it must be, uh, you know, fun to educate people on, so. on the history of these things. <laughs> Th thanks again, James. It's been great fun.